Hello and welcome to Let's Play Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen with me, Bring It On. Dragon's Dogma was both developed and published by Capcom. It was initially released in May of 2012, with the Dark Arisen expansion launching in April of 2013. It is a third person, open world, dark fantasy RPG, and one of my favorite games of all time. I have played through and beat this game a handful of times in the past, technically a little less because this is one of those games I consider New Game Plus as part of a full playthrough. Despite that, I will not be doing New Game Plus in this Let's Play, because for the most part, it's the same experience with a couple payoffs towards the end. And even with all the experience that I do have with the game, I am still far from an expert. There is a lot to this game, a lot of detail, which is one of the things that makes it fantastic. It's also been many years since I played, so I've got to shake off the rust as we go, which we're going to do in a trial by fire, because I'm going to play on hard mode, which is something I haven't done before. Let's go ahead and jump in and see how I fare. This mode increases the damage the player takes and stamina consumption rate. It also greatly increases gold received by defeating enemies. It changes a couple other things as well, which we'll touch on as we play. Not worried about that. We're never going to change the difficulty. We're going to stick it through to the bitter end. In another place, in another life, Another child of man blazes your path. How dark it's gone. Let's equip our lantern. Have you a light source? Alright, so we have a light attack, which you can combo with. We have a heavy attack. Jump. Keep your weapon. Grab. So you can grab onto larger enemies and climb them, or you can grab smaller enemies and carry them around or hold them for your allies to strike. Also some abilities here, so we have a shield strike, a symbol attack, shield summons is a taunt, we have a blink strike, skyward slash, good for airborne enemies or attacking certain parts of larger enemies, and hindsight slash. Also, I don't consider this a spoiler. Some might. Uh, this is the tutorial. There is a character creation we'll touch on here in a little bit. We near our journey's end. The final station of our long struggle. It shows itself. What an introduction, right? My favorite introductions introductions in gaming. Alright, so this is a pretty important mechanic throughout the game. We're getting a couple more allies here. Later on, this will be in a little bit more detail. But simplified for the sake of the tutorial. Our kind is ever ready to fight by the grace of your guidance. I'm on my way. We give our allies some basic commands, so help us come, help again, and go. Alright, some new enemy types here. We have goblins and hobgoblins. You'll notice that the different enemies have varying stagger thresholds. But the small goblins were easily able to knock around and interrupt their attacks. The larger ones are a little bit harder to stagger. And I believe hard mode triples the stagger threshold. Which makes it a lot harder just to sit there and spam your attacks. Whoops. And you see that my sword and shield are now glowing orange. Uh, one of the allies that we got was a mage. She applied a fire enchantment to my equipment. He also has a heal spell called Anodyne. Uh, the mage is the only class that gets access to that. Up 
someone in trouble in here. A survivor. Come. Arisen, you've come. I fear our defeat is plain to see. We thought to inundate the worm with sheer numbers, a sea of blades. It was our fool's hope. Our sea runs dry, and the Duke's army is lost in the gambit. Arisen, I beg you, sir, grant vengeance to those who've fallen. If this be of use, I will give it gladly. More bodies. All right, that's a harpy. Something neat about the companions in this game is that they can learn as you go, or if you recruit certain companions they already know certain things about certain enemies. So for instance, our mage companion just gave us a fire enchantment when fighting the harpy. Enemies have varying elemental weaknesses, and typically if you see an enemy with feathers, they're weak to fire, because you'll light their feathers on fire and they can no longer fly, which is a mechanic will be introduced properly later. This is a heal spell. Put me down, you beast. Let's go here and grab some stuff before we proceed. I think that's it. Our goal is let's hasten to the dragon's roost. So while I have played through and beaten the game only a handful of times, I have started the game a lot Who more than that. This way, sir! I'm pretty familiar with the beginning. I should be proud to we hidden away here for fear of the beasts all around. The expansion though, I've only played through this way, sir. One time. Well technically twice. How we could get up there. Oh, I'm not gonna worry about it. I'll set the volume turned down fairly low. Uh, the pawns you see talking, all the dialogue to the left hand side, when they all talk at the same time, it can get very loud. So hopefully, the sound quality is okay. The enemy design in this game is awesome. It's a little stereotypical. I mean, you can tell that's a chimera, of course. But it looks awesome. So what you can do here. Is focus the varying body parts. So we take out the snake first. 
Yeah, we'll disable that part of the body. Oh, not a stamina. All right, you can pause any time and heal up. a different health bar for the snake tail. We take that out, we'll be able to attack from behind like that, and it will have uh, poison attacks. Also, whenever you take out one of the body parts, Dagger over, which I'll show as soon as we take out the snake too. Snake tail gone. One less thing we have to worry about, and then we can wail on it while he's down. And next, we take out the goat head, who I believe is weak to physical attacks. Also, a lot of the magic you see the Chimera casting is coming from the goat. Actually, all of it. Alright, goat's down. So, I don't see any more lightning bolts coming from it. Or I believe the sleep spell. We still have the line to contend with, who is one tough cookie. Companions go down and you just pick them right back up like that. There's a couple of exceptions to that rule where they will die permanently. Another neat little detail, the message I read in the beginning when I selected hard mode about my stats, I gotta take more damage and abilities require more stamina, doesn't apply to pawns. They're not affected by hard mode like I am. Making them an invaluable asset. That lightning was from my mage, not from the goat. Hard mode is living up to its name. Like, come on, buddy.
<laughs> I was out of stamina when we killed him. <laughs> but we got him. Great success. Now choose, flee, or step forth. Take hold of what lies beyond. Claim mastery over the eternal ring. It is possible to fail the tutorial, and you don't see that last cutscene. If you die, it just skips you to the character creation. And countless lifetimes come to pass, indicating that the tutorial we just played through took place a long time ago. The delightful and ever novel pleasure of a useless occupation, Henri de Regnier? Regnier? All right, welcome to character creation. So something really neat about the character creator in this game is that your physical attributes actually play a role in the mechanics. So first off, choosing your gender, a uh, male or female, impacts a couple of things in the game. I think it's just one quest, and then there's a certain monster that your sex affects, uh, which we'll talk about when we get to it. But I'm gonna be playing a male. Good old Donald. Then your moniker is for online play. If you go through all these names, you'll see a few Easter eggs from Capcom. Let's see if they have Don. Look what they have Dart. Like uh, from Legend of Dragoon. If they don't have Don, I'll probably grab that. They have Don. And Donna. And Donna Vin. Fantastic. And then our build. So you see all the armor and equipment on these guys. You don't get that starting out, it's just showing you kind of what each class would look like. So this is a fighter, a magic knight, a warrior, strider maybe? Or that's a strider. Strider, ranger, and assassin, I kind of think look the same, so. Uh, this is a mage or a sorcerer. I think this is a mage and this is a sorcerer, based off the staff. Yeah, doesn't really matter which one I pick because I'm going to go a little bit more detail off camera. I'll just like this guy to start with. So selecting your voice type is just for the grunts that they're making as you play a silent protagonist. I'll go with type 2. Okay. I'm actually going to throw an edit here and create my character off camera and then I'll just meet you guys right back here when I'm done and we'll get started. Okay, and here's my character, almost a spitting image of myself. Stats are a little off, my hair isn't that long, but they didn't have my hairstyle so I just picked one I liked. So without any further ado, let's get started.
prophets have spoken, friends. The dragon's return is nigh. Join the honorable duke's ranks and help us be rid of the foul beast. The days come to lay down rod and reel and take up the sword. How about the beast? That'll show him. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. <laughs> also, that's one of my favorite dragon designs in any game I've ever played. And the scale, just the overall design of them.
I don't think this is the arms he's talking about. Looks like they would break if you sneezed at him. It's time for you to begin your journey as a Risen. But before you can win your heart back from the dragon, you'll need to prepare. All right, so we have to pick our starting vocation or class. Vocation determines what your basic attributes, winnable equipment, and skills. So each vocation or class uh, gives you different skills, but also as you level it up, you get access to different augments, which are passive talents. And you can bring those augments over to other classes. So say you unlock a augment for fighter, swap over to a strider class, you can use the augments you unlocked for the fighter. And because of that, I am going to start with fighter, I kind of want to start mage and rip that bandit off. The fighter gets access to an augment that increases your carry capacity. So I want to get that as soon as possible. And these aren't all the classes. There are more. Uh, there's an advanced version of each one of these. So there's warrior for fighter, ranger for strider, sorcerer for mage, and then there's hybrid classes. So you have a magic archer, which is a mix between strider and mage. A mystic knight, which is my end goal. The class might end up playing once I get everything unlocked that I want. What's a mixture between fighter and mage, and then his assassin, which is between fighter and strider. I'm going to start with fighter because I want to unlock sinew, which gives me increased carry capacity. My primary weapons such as swords and daggers are combat essentials. Secondary weapons like bows and shields offer support. Wanna leave any loot behind? We're playing on hard mode, so every resource is valuable. You say it left a glowing scar? Yes. The wound has closed, and it seems the worst has passed, but his heart lies silent. If you would face me. Sure of this? Yes. Ill magic, the work of some curse. The whole world's already gone mad for fear of this dragon. Won't no good come of this. I must go see to the others, Kina. Tell me if aught changes here. All right. I don't mean to skip through all those notifications. I would like to read most of them out loud, except for generic tutorial stuff. You should be a bed. I wish you would not strain yourself so. I am worried for you, cuz. I mentioned earlier that your physical attributes determine some mechanics, so. If you make a heavier, larger character, you can carry more. Your carry capacity is automatically increased. But your uh, stamina regenerates at a slower rate. It's inconsequential. But something to take note of. 
Also, if you're smaller, there's larger enemies, and you can run between their legs or more easily avoid their attacks if you're a smaller target. Uh, being larger, you can't do that. Alright, welcome to Casardis. This town has a fair bit to do in it, and we're going to spend some time early on and do it. I don't want to leave any stone unturned. A lot of the stuff in this first town is easy to miss. I did my first playthrough because the game kind of ushers you out of the town. And there are, they're not timed quests, but there are quests you can miss if you proceed too far into the main quest. Uh, there's a lot of side quests that will disappear after that point. So I'm going to call it here for now. The game is really pretty for coming out in 2012. But yeah, I'm going to call it here for now. Uh, next episode, we'll begin exploring Casardis and see what we can't find in all the nooks and crannies. But for now, thanks for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next one.